I'm begging you to start construction quickly. My monthly salary is 5,000 yuan. I have to repay a 3,000 yuan mortgage each month. I have to raise a child and I also have to rent a place to live. I really can't hold on anymore. This kind of bleak cry is heard often in towns and cities across China in recent years. After the Hong Kong High Court issued a winding up order, Evergrande, the second largest property developer in China, announced that by the end of 2023, the amount of outstanding debt had reached about 300 billion yuan. Apart from the debts, Evergrande also left behind approximately 1.62 million unfinished properties affecting 6 million homeowners. In China's real estate market, due to pre-sale regulations and lack of supervision, many homeowners entrusted their hard-earned money to developers and even began repaying bank loans. However, due to the various reasons, the buildings remain unfinished and cannot be completed. With the developers' debt crisis, their funding is also in jeopardy. Chinese banks are unwilling to bear the risk, leaving all the risk to the home buyers, so they are now in predicament of losing both money and housing. Chinese real estate companies that have already defaulted or are in the verge of defaulting are not limited to just Evergrande. Despite the Chinese Communist Party's promise to ensure property is finished, the majority of unfinished residential projects are still highly unlikely to be completed. These could become ticking time bombs that may lead to social unrest. Once it explodes, the ones left injured will still be those unfortunate home buyers. Mr. Guo, an owner of an unfinished Evergrande property in Henan, stated that he had long given up hope on Evergrande. In early 2021, he spent 820,000 yuan buying a unit in an Evergrande Phase 2 development. But months later, the building only had its main structure erected before Evergrande's collapse. After negotiations between Evergrande, local governments and homeowners, it was decided that Evergrande would continue with the first phase, while the second and third phases could be handed over to a local developer. Now, phase one owners are extremely worried about when the building will be completed if Evergrande goes bankrupt. Only five or six workers were seen idling at the second and third phase sites, showing no signs of real resumption of work. A manager from a leading real estate company in China revealed that ensuring property delivery requires financial support and guarantees from the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development and Financial Regulatory Agencies of the CCP. But because there are lack the money, the so-called ensuring property delivery is just a slogan. In China, it has become common for home buyers to start repaying loans before the buildings are completed. Under this unfair rule, buyers whose life savings are tied up in these buildings often find themselves unable to cope when left with unfinished properties. Due to the recent years of pandemic, many have seen sharp declines in their income. Faced with no other choice, they moved into these unfinished buildings. But many of these unfinished buildings have no water or electricity. Some don't even have windows or doors installed, making them extremely dangerous and completely unsuitable for living. In order to save land, developers often build residential buildings of seven floors or more, many of which don't even have elevators installed yet, making it very inconvenient to go up and down the floors. Living in such an environment is simply unimaginable. <laughs> These years, really, just talking about it makes me tear up uncontrollably. There are no words for this, nowhere to appeal. The hardship and bitterness of the owners stem from the fact that it seems no matter how hard they try, they can't change the harsh reality. On one hand, they have to diligently repay their mortgage to the bank every month without missing a penny. On the other hand, they have to deal with the rent expenses. From time to time, they have to put down their day-to-day -day jobs to fight tooth and nail with developers for their rights. Such a life is exhausting, coupled with the sharp decline in income for many people in recent years due to the pandemic. They are forced to move into these rough houses that have consumed their hard-earned savings over half a lifetime. Buying a unit but only to receive an unfinished property that does not meet basic living conditions is a reality for many in China. Banks in China do not care whether developers are responsible. They only pursue buyers for not fulfilling their loan obligations. If they fail to repay the mortgage, they will be added to the blacklist after a certain period, which means they cannot travel by plane or high-speed train, their children cannot attend private schools, and ultimately the bank may forcibly repossess and auction off the property. These consequences force mortgage payers to bite the bullet and continue paying their debt. Behind the banks in China stand the CCP government, 
While it appears to operate according to the law, ordinary people in China have no way to appeal or fight back. Despite the fact that the laws they rely on are completely unfair as it clearly overlooks the developer's responsibility, banks only hold home buyers accountable. This is what the CCP claims to be a rule of law society. Although Chinese real estate companies have the upper hand in their struggle with home buyers, they have few solutions for their own problems. In a market where only some state-owned enterprises are relatively stable, a majority of developers are struggling in a whirlpool of debt, with some barely surviving. Now, the remaining real estate companies are making strategic adjustments. Selling residential properties is difficult, so they attempt to rescue the company through commercial real estate, such as malls, supermarkets, or office buildings. But this path also seems difficult. In an overall declining economy, foot traffic in commercial plazas is worrying. For instance, areas like Lu Jiajue in Shanghai, which used to be bustling with people at the Grand Gateway, now appear deserted. Similar situations are happening in many prime commercial areas in Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Hong Kong. Due to high unemployment rates, people have returned to their hometowns early before the New Year holiday, which resulted in more vacancies on subways and cities becoming desolate. Office vacancy rates are high, and developers seem to be making a hopeless struggle. It seems that the CCP has yet to understand the essence of crux of the matter as they attempt to salvage the real estate industry while rescuing some developers. On January 12th, the Ministry of Housing and Urban Rural Development of China and the China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission jointly issued a notice that requires cities at and above the perfectual level to establish urban real estate financing coordination departments, assess the local real estate market and financing needs, and solve the problem in real estate financing. On January 30th, the first city to do so was Nanjing in Guangxi. They announced that it had established real estate financing coordination and sent the first batch of 107 real estate projects to local financial institution as a white list. According to Xinhua News on February 3rd, many cities successfully released the first batch of real estate project financing whitelist. The fact that various cities are taking action and that the banks are following suit indicate that the recent announcement has been put into operation. Xinhua News states that the tight cash flow of real estate companies is mainly due to two reasons market demand and corporate financing. So the recently introduced real estate financing measures aims to address the financing issue. To put it simply, the whitelist is a list of ongoing real estate projects intended for financing support. Officials believe that this can meet the financing needs to project development and construction, promote the construction and delivery of real estate projects, and help restore market confidence and improve market outlook. In other words, by providing financing to enterprises, the goal is to revitalize them. However, there is no evidence the strategy would work. The overall downturn of the Chinese economy and the decline of the demographic dividend had led to a decrease in home buyers. The problem of market demand cannot be solved simply by reviving real estate companies. Even if the companies keep operating and properties are delivered, what then? Potential home buyers still don't have money and they are still reluctant to unable to buy houses, regardless of whether Evergrande or other real estate giants collapse or survive. Moreover, the so-called whitelist can only select projects from non-defaulting real estate companies at present. Being on the whitelist does not guarantee that real estate projects will receive financing from financial institutions. The final decision rests with the financial institutions. Very few privately owned and mixed ownership real estate projects qualify for the whitelist, with the majority remaining being state-owned enterprises. After all the fuss, it turns out to be the old routine of state-owned enterprises advancing, private enterprises retreating, returning to the overarching direction of the CCP's return to planned economy. With limited market understanding, there is no doubt that in the face of economic crisis, the CCP will either stand and watch or make hasty decisions. Even the execution does not seem to align with the initial objectives. Many real estate developers, bankers and analysts believe that despite Beijing's series of measures to boost the market, Banks are still reluctant to provide new loans to troubled real estate companies because of asset quality concerns. This could hinder the success of the latest financing support measures. For example, the recent decision by the Hong Kong High Court to liquidate Evergrande has further cast a shadow over the prospects of real estate sales, making banks even more cautious.
Evergrande's liquidation highlights foreign investors' despair over China's debt levels and keeps developers out of the globe lending market. Banks are unwilling to provide new credit to the troubled Chinese real estate industry. According to a Reuters report on February 2nd, a loan manager at an unnamed joint stock bank said that under the whitelist policies, banks will prioritize risk control rather than recording bad debts on their books. The manager also said that the preferred projects on the whitelist are expected to be ongoing projects developed by state-owned enterprises, which are considered safer choices due to their ample funding. After a series of defaults over the past few years, Beijing has repeatedly urged the banks to issue reasonable loans to real estate developers. However, these efforts have yielded little result. China's central bank data shows that the growth rate of real estate development loans slowed down, growing by only 1.5% year-on-year at the end of 2023, 2.2% lower than the end of the previous year. Another manager at a branch of a state-owned bank in Hebei province stated that if there are others promising projects, they will try to avoid real estate projects. The manager said that, The whitelist compiled by the local government is only for reference. The banks will evaluate whether to issue loans at the amount of loans themselves. A senior executive of a large private developer facing debt defaults stated that some of their real estate projects have also been included in Chongqing's first whitelist. However, despite being on the whitelist, the executive said that it is still unclear whether they will receive financial support from the banks. Chinese real estate expert Ma Guangyuan wrote on January 24th that the entire real estate market has shifted from a seller's market to a buyer's market. The article believes that in small cities where properties prices are low and down payments are relatively high, the total amount of down payment is not as significant. The down payment ratio in small cities should rhetorically be higher than that in big cities, but the reality is the opposite. In addition, Ma said value-added tax, deed tax, and stamp duty on properties all have room to decrease. He also comments that it is necessary to stabilize people's consumption. In 2023, China's economy showed insufficient demand. Most importantly, people are not consuming, marked by the fact that prices are not rising. If all prices drop, there will be problems with the entire economic cycle. Ma believes that because real estate has a significant impact on market confidence, the 2024 policies on real estate must be put in place and unnecessary restrictive policies should be removed as soon as possible. There has been no encouraging policies for owner-occupied properties or properties bought for renovations. Past policies have only relaxed to a limited extent, far from enough. This is because the entire real estate market has already adjusted to its place and even to the extent of over-adjustment. China's National Bureau of Statistics released economic data for 2023 last month, showing a 9.6% decline in real estate development investment. The national sales area of commercial housing was 1.1 billion square meters, down to 8.5%. The sale value of the commercial housing was 12 trillion yuan, down 6.5%. Although China has recently introduced a series of measures to stimulate the real estate market, there is still no sign that the real estate industry has hit its ultimate bottom. Sustained policy support is needed to achieve a soft landing for the real estate market. It is becoming increasingly clear that the stimulus measures introduced are not enough this year. Disappointing monthly sales data show that it will take quite some time for the real estate market to recover. Although Beijing authorities are intensifying efforts to alleviate the liquidity crunch in the real estate industry and boost buyer confidence, the housing market has remained persistently sluggish, with December witnessing the largest price drop in nearly nine years. Let's talk Shenzhen as an example. It is one of the most resilient cities in terms of prices. The implementation of the Recognize a House, Not the Loan policy in August 2023 was considered a major boon for the housing market. But it hasn't brought much relief. Despite this, housing speculators in Shenzhen are still in despair. A drop of 3 million yuan in one month isn't considered much. The Shenzhen housing market can't hold any longer and has become so fragile that it's terrifying. The second housing market has seen a sharp decline, with only about 2,000 transactions per month. Some second-hand homes purchased just five years ago have experienced a nearly 70% drop in value, nearly wiping out the down payment. Currently, the entire Shenzhen housing market is reducing prices to stimulate higher sales, from old and small properties to newly built ones. 
properties near schools and even luxury homes. None has been spared. As the market sentiment shifts, prices are continuously being cut. Buyers are waiting on the sidelines while owners are fiercely slashing prices. In this environment, many speculative buyers using loans to enter the market are now selling at lower prices, but there are no takers leaving them bruised and battered. The situation in Shenzhen is still the same, and conditions in other cities aren't much better. In extreme cases like in Hegang and other places in northeast China, we're seeing distressing phenomena where houses are selling for just tens of thousands of yuan, and shops are being given away in order to escape mortgage debts. If we say that speculators in the housing market are feeling the heat, it's only those who once thrived and now struggling. While they still have a place to live, those unfortunate souls who bought incomplete properties, the ordinary working class people just looking for a place to call home, have emptied their life savings only to be living in shabby units. The scale of China's housing market problem is staggering. With Evergrande's collapse, its 1.62 million incomplete properties is just a tip of the iceberg. According to a report released on Wednesday by Japan's financial services firm Nomura Holdings, incomplete pre-sold properties in China are estimated to be 20 million units. It would take about 3.2 trillion yuan to complete these buildings. China's real estate industry is collapsing. Developers are facing severe debt crisis and buyers' patience with delayed completion of their homes is wearing thin. The less patience they have, the less likely they are to buy, leading to a massive wave of defaults in many parts of China. Desperate buyers of pre-sold properties have decided to stop paying their monthly installments at any cost. The fewer people buying houses, the harder it is for many developers to resolve their debt crisis. As debt crises persist, funding chains become tighter and may even break, making it increasingly difficult for them to complete the construction of their scheduled properties. All of this has fallen into an inescapable vicious cycle. Nomura Holdings predicts that if the completion rate of houses this year is only 20%, then out of the total number of units sold by the developers from 2015 to 2020, only 48% will be delivered on time. This means that 52% of units will be unable to be delivered on schedule. A crisis is unfolding. At some point in 2024, delays will threaten social stability. The 20 million incomplete properties involve tens of millions of families and tens of millions of people. It's foreseeable that group protests related to incomplete properties will become more frequent across the country. Tens of millions of people have been deprived of homes to live in by the CCP and property developers. Adding to this are the millions who have been wiped out in the stock market and left with nothing from their investment. The number of people with nowhere to turn is in the hundreds of millions. The Chinese communist regime is in the dire strait, and its overthrow may only await the one last straw that one cannot yet predict.